full-blown brawl. The house later fell into chaos with councillors from both sides punching, kicking and slapping each other. Uh, following this, BJP councillor Minakshi Sharma filed a police complaint at the Kamla Market police station against up councillors. The complaint cited grievous harm and criminal assault on BJP women councillors. मैं क्या बताऊं ये तो आप उनसे पूछिए गुंडागर्दी के सिवा उनको कुछ काम नहीं आता अगर वो इतना देश की जिम्मेदारी उन लोगों को दी हुई है अगर वो देश के बारे में सोचें तो देश बहुत तरक्की कर सकता है चारों तरफ गुंडागर्दी चारों तरफ ये इससे देश आगे नहीं बढ़ता हम आपस में क्यों लड़ते हैं हम आपस में इतनी गुंडागर्दी क्यों कर रहे हैं ये लोग जैसे ही भारतीय जनता पार्टी को लगा कि वो स्टैंडिंग कमेटी का चुनाव हार रहे हैं उन्होंने हमारी मेयर पर एक महिला मेयर पर स्टेज पर चढ़कर नीतीश बाबू प्रधानमंत्री बनने के लिए विकासवादी से अवसरवादी बने कांग्रेस और आरजेडी के शरण में गए पूरे बिहार की स्थिति आवश्यक स्थिति बनी हुई है अपराध फिर से चरम पर जा रहा है कानून और व्यवस्था ध्वस्त हो गई है फिर कहीं और भाषण दे रहे हैं अब आप भी जरा बताइए क्या अनुभव है इन लोगों का 2021 में पहली बार ये राजनीति में आए राज्य मंत्री बने कितना दिन का अनुभव है देश बचाना है बाबा साहब अम्बेडकर के संविधान को बचाना है बिहार को आगे बढ़ाना है देश को आगे बढ़ाना है खाली जुमला नहीं बोलिए हम बिहारी लोग हैं हमको पूर्वक मत समझिए In just about 15 months ladies and gentlemen the country will be casting the ballot to elect the next government will it be under the leadership of prime minister narendra modi and with the vote go to the bjp and will it be a hat trick for the pm or will it be an opposition and if it is going to be the opposition then who in the opposition will lead the charge modi versus who is a question that's been asked multiple times but what stood out today as union home minister amit shah pulled no punches when he took on nitish kumar is when he called him for his opportunism he called him out for his opportunism saying a man who has spent his life fighting against the congress party and jungle raj that means uh, lalu yadav jumped ship just to further his own ambition Ayaram gayaram no more the doors of the BJP are closed for Nitish forever is what he has turned around and said he has also said that his prime ministerial zest or ambition has put paid to his entire political career and his political stature that's what Amit Shah alluded to clearly there was a criticism and a counter that came from Nitish Kumar and also it came from the likes of Lalu Yadav who said that all of us that means the opposition has to come together to try and oust narendra modi amit shah also said that the very people that he opposed for the for his whole life he seems to have surrendered himself to them that's what he was alluding to nitish kumar with respect to sonia gandhi and lalu yadav tejasvi yadav the person whom nitish has actually promised that i will hand over the chair of the bjp of the bihar chief minister's kursi the chair to you but he's not stipulated when But in this run up to the next 15 months does the JDU stand for any credibility now given the number of times Nitish Kumar has done this ayaram gayaram or dal badlu these questions remain along with the fact that is there really governance being delivered currently we start with that news just coming through in view of Bihar's grand alliance rally The Purnia University in Bihar has actually postponed the graduation second year examination Saurav Rathore getting us these details 
A notice regarding the same has been published on the university's website. Students are advised through a notice by visiting the official website. The examination will remain postponed until the 15th of March 2023. So you have pushed the exams by 20 days to facilitate a massive rally. That's that's the reality. That's the reality. Let's go across to our guest, Dr. Nikhil Anand, spokesperson of the BJP. Satya Prakash Mishra, senior leader of the JDU, should join us. And Arun Anand, consulting editor, first post. Oh, they're all there. Namaste and Jai Hind. Thank you very, very much. The, the largest question or perhaps the first question is, and I'm going to ask this of Dr. Nikhil Anand of the BJP. Why did Amit Shah yeah. have to single out Nitish Kumar and sharpen this attack? Is the BJP trying to seed the grounds for coming with us, becoming the party with the single largest mandate? He said that also, that BJP ko akele number de do, and he alluded to the demographic change around the borders of Bihar, which is happening. That's when he brought that reference. But if that was the case, then it also reflects the fact that the BJP heard. The BJP made the mistake of trusting Nitish Kumar. Yeah, you are right. Actually, Nitish Kumar is a man who has zero credibility, zero worth. But the time you remember, in 1994, when there was a chaos, confusion in Bihar, and we fought together against the Jungle Raj, as well as the corruption, lawlessness, and what is what was happening in Bihar that time. We put Nitish Kumar on our shoulders. We raised his slogan. And we met Nitish Kumar, the chief minister of Bihar. But when we started our journey in 2005, you see what happened in 2013. Mm. He apologized and came back to us. And again, he parted with just for his petty daydream. No, but you didn't also realize. What happened? No, no you also you were also opportunistic. Na, jo aapko chhod ke chala gaya. जिन्होंने प्रधान देश के प्रधानमंत्री के बारे में काफी कुछ अपशब्द कहे यहां तक कि आपने ये आरोप भी लगाया कि जब प्रधानमंत्री गया में थे तो बम विस्फोट के बारे में इन्हें पता था इन्होंने करवाया आप फिर जाके उनसे गलबैया करने लगे ना आपने तो यू आर ऑल्सो अपॉर्चुनिस्टिक सो वाई शुड यू कॉल ओनली नीतीश बाबू अपॉर्चुनिस्टिक नहीं बिहार को बचाने के लिए हमें लगा कि नीतीश कुमार ने शायद ये पश्चाताप किया होगा और अब वो सही रास्ते पर जाएंगे बट आई थिंक दैट ही इज अबिचुअल ऑफेंडर and now today in today's meeting when our honorable home minister has said directly that there is no comeback for nitish kumar now nitish kumar is just a fodder for rjd hmm. and he has to suffer for the kind of politics he has played no he what is, politics has he played that kind of politics think, you, even you bjp as a political party has been opportunistic haven't you been opportunistic haven't you relied on opportunism when you have inducted you have you have inducted you have inducted leaders from parties you have opposed you have just because it suited you jdu and rjd like parties rjd is a family based party why i am not getting into i am not getting into parivarwad i am just focusing on avsarwad now if you are avsarwadi avsarwadi to har koi hota hai but let, let, let's just see Looking what kind of opportunity is another thing. But when you are habitual offender, you are taking U-turns and U-turns and U-turns hmm. just for your petty daydream. Hmm. Then of course, you can be called opportunist. Uh, so uh, so, so let, let's take this to Satya Prakash Mishra ji. Satya Prakash Mishra ji. जो जो व्यक्ति अपने ही कमिटमेंट पे कमिट खरा नहीं उतरा वो देश को कैसे वादे देश को कैसे किस तरह के वादे देगा how can british kumar present himself as a credible prime ministerial face when his own words cannot be trusted first of all anand ji nitish kumar has never claimed and never expressed that he wished to become the prime minister of india he has several time on several platform clarified that he has no such kind of ambition on the other hand mm. what i'm trying to tell you and the, through your channel to your viewers that Nitish Kumar is chief minister since 2005. Mm. In 2005, he committed to the people of Bihar, Sushasan, 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 and he established that. On the second term, he committed 
that the electricity will be to the every household otherwise he will not go to seek any kind of vote from the voters he hmm. fulfilled that promise he hmm. fulfilled that promise and once but did he get the mandate from some the woman approached him what a yeah yeah second time one, he again no, no, one minute, one minute, hold on one, i don't interfere i don't interfere hold on Nikhil hold on Nikhil ji is a man of commitment to the principle of governance he is one minute one minute one minute one minute one minute one minute satyaprakash ji dr nikhil anand no no i i am just going to request both of you ek dusre ke upar na bole i'll give you your chance to one minute satyaprakash ji bas i'll give you your chance to but please please nitish kumar yes satyaprakash ji come please My, my simple Nitish point is Nitish Kumar ji is a man of commitment to the principle of governance to the people if of that India, is the case not to the if BJP that is the case any other political has he, party has he won incremental he has, number of he seats he has fulfilled he one minute satyaprakash ji has he won incremental he number has, of seats that was, and has no, he that, has he won that, incremental that has he got incremental no, no, BJP, incremental vote share BJP, year after year term after yeah. term understand that bjp back stepped nitish kumar in the last election that was the reason our seat got reduced mm, but he still continued so and but he still but he still stayed on with him form government principal, was chief JD, minister for nearly BJP. 2 years is it so let me tell you let me assure you of one more thing that nitish kumar has never broken any promise which he made to the people of bihar that uh, is his uh, so credibility whatever pro whatever promise Sudhar he makes to a lalu prasad yadav whatever promise he makes to a pm modi or amit shah it's all right as long as he gets the kursi and he is no, continuing no, no, that, to give that, the promise that, to the that, people that kind what of promise he, what political promise political to the people what one minute what Both promise grab the chair देखिए जिस मेरा सिंपल पॉइंट ये है इट्स अबाउट क्रेडिबिलिटी सर इफ 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 यू कंटिन्यू इंटरप्ट आई एम अनएबल टू स्पीक सत्यप्रकाश सत्यप्रकाश आई आई एम आस्किंग यू ओनली आई एम आस्किंग यू दिस इवन एज ही वेंट इनटू द आरजेडी फोल्ड ही कमिटेड द चीफ मिनिस्टर्स चेयर टू तेजस्वी यादव सो डिड ही कमिटेड टू द पीपल और टीडी कमिटेड टू द आरजेडी डिड ही आस्क द पीपल कैन आई मेक दिस कमिटमेंट यू आर मिस मिस यू आर मिस इंटरप्रेटिंग द फैक्ट what he said in a ceremony that okay in 2025 tejasvi will lead that that was a kind of boost and indication by mr nitish kumar but at the same point of time he is committed to the people of bihar for development to to aapki party ka kya hoga yesterday day before yesterday he was Satya asking Prakash for satyaprakash ji satyaprakash ji he was ji. asking sorry no, please no, come you are come misinterpreting the fact no no, 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 no. don't you. misinterpret the fact nitish I kumar has never you. said anything much beyond than I, this i am asking you sir nitish a kumar ji has who is yeah, has yeah, i am giving what you has reply. he done for his own party you reply that nitish kumar ji i was distinguished leader what of our party what has he done for his own he party sir he has just boosted something what has he done for his own party who is the next person after after nitish kumar ji to lead the jdu no, don't is don't worry about that nitish kumar ji is now leader for if the jdu if the jdu chief is committing that tejasvi will lead and jdu will play for, for second fiddle no, that why will why will that is your interpretation jdu rjd and other five political party has joined hand together to combat bjp to contain bjp in, at national so level and can, bihar mein to bjp hai nahi agar agar aapka nahi nahi dekhe agar bihar interpret what nitish kumar agar bihar mein bjp nahi hai to aap bjp ko ye keh rahe hain ki bjp nahi unka aapka jdu ko kamzor kiya aap keh rahe hain bihar mein bjp nahi aur aap keh rahe hain ki bihar mein bjp bjp nahi jdu ko kamzor bhi kiya bjp aap ek taraf keh rahe hain ki bjp ki taakat hai dusri taraf ke bjp ki koi taakat nahi बीजेपी को बिहार में कोई ताकत नहीं है लेकिन बैक स्टेप करने की ताकत थी हमारे साथ तो उन्होंने वो किया अच्छा 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 एक मिनट आपने इतने सारी बातें कर दी मैं आपको ये कह रहा हूँ ये अभी तेजस्वी जी के बारे में डिस्कशन का मैटर नहीं है नहीं, नहीं, तेजस्वी नहीं मैं तो ये पूछ रहा हूँ की जो व्यक्ति आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू एड एनीथिंग मोर ऑन दैट जी सत्य प्रकाश जी सत्य प्रकाश जी यू कैन बी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग इन योर डिफेंस बट देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड कॉमन सेंस आई एम आस्किंग यू इफ समी स्टार्टेड अ पार्टी एंड फॉर ट्वेंटी ईयर्स हेज फॉट अगेंस्ट अ पर्टिकुलर कॉज ही स्प्लिट in ways they were two good friends jay aur viru mein jhada jhagda ho gaya and then he was fighting jay was fighting against viru after after yeah. fighting against him for 15 yeah. years 20 years then jay and viru say let's 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 drink the poison of our animosity and then come together then again he says are bardash nahi hua i will never go back to him he said that also ab ye galti fir se nahi dohrayenge फिर दो साल बाद फिर से वही गलती उन्होंने दोहराई है तो दैट्स व्हाई आई एम आस्किंग ही इज ऑल ऑन रिकॉर्ड नीतीश कुमार जी इज ऑन रिकॉर्ड सेइंग दिस ऑन द फ्लोर ऑफ द बिहार असेंबली करेक्ट मी इफ आई एम रॉन्ग डॉक्टर निखिल आनंद उन्होंने कहा था कि नहीं कि अब ये गलती दोबारा नहीं होगी 
राइट मे आई रिप्लाई ही प्रोमिस्ड डू आई हैव नॉट जॉइन हैंड सत्य प्रकाश जी प्लीज वेट निखिल आनंद एंड देन आई हैव अ चांस टू रिस्पॉन्ड यस आई कम बैक टू यू सर आई कम बैक टू यू प्लीज वेट he told this he promised this on the floor of assembly that he will not join hand with rjd and now he is saying that our today things are very clear our national party in charge vinod tawre already said last month in our state executive meet hmm. that doors are closed for nitish kumar today amit shah ji clarified this and now rjd will take on nitish kumar because it was a secret deal we have never and asked to open RJD the door okay now now okay let, let's just pause here for a bit let, let me ask arun anand let me ask arun anand sir i sir sir one minute one minute satyaprakash ji let me ask arun anand arun anand consulting editor first post is with us simple point sir will you trust nitish kumar with your vote and and for him to lead the opposition or the challenge against pm narendra modi and also to become prime minister of the country does he have that trust of yours no i don't think he has that uh, kind of a factor and because he has uh, flipped you know uh, he has changed his sides uh, too frequently uh, one is that and second is that uh, unfortunately you know uh, nitish kumar was uh, one of those leaders who uh, was representing you know that progressive phase of bihar and now instead of you know governance being the popular agenda they have gone with the party which has been you know notorious for you know uh, kind of you know dumping down bihar to almost like a bottomless pit we know the kind of you know governance crisis uh, bihar had faced and let me tell you because i travel a bit and uh, uh, also get to know uh, you know a uh, uh, lot of ground reports from the ground level there is lot of anarchy and you know there is lot of law and order issue the same situation which was there in the lalu raj that same situation is emerging and i'll give you a couple of examples one is that uh, you have uh, witnessed recently that a uh, lot of people had died of illegal hooch and mm. the kind of uh, uh, response we had got from the state government then we have seen you know uh kind of shocking visuals where students were beaten on the streets hmm. uh for you know uh, when they were demonstrating for a certain uh, you know demands and uh, your reporter also reported you just brought out a report that yeah. a university has to delay the so uh, exam because of you know a rally so these are all you know indications hmm. and i think uh, this tactical alliance which nitish has done uh, i think it's going to backfire uh but i also want to bring in a point see bihar is a very bihar, bihar is a very complex state hmm. and the caste lines are very uh, sharp there but right. when it comes to assembly elections i think uh, this is a combination which bjp will have to fight you know tooth and nail but i think in the lok sabha elections hmm. uh, the bjp will have a very strong edge uh, well, because in this case i'm i'm just i'm, I'm uh, just asking Kodi, I, I i totally understand that in the, at the state level state level the dynamics are different at the center you your opinion arun anand's opinion is that this group is not going to pose the challenge to prime minister narendra modi led bjp when it comes to bihar itself pm modi is not that important factor as far as the local dynamics are concerned the bjp also does not have a face in bihar they don't have a proper leader they are also struggling they have not been able to get whoever was there in the past was uh, so close to nitish kumar he never did much for the party did more for nitish kumar that's the internal voice that has come out there so the bjp cannot also color itself in glory but my question to you satyaprakash mishra ji is what is the future of the jdu yeah. after nitish kumar my please hear me out please hear me out before you answer another 20 10 10, 10 seconds i'll take yeah. now that bjp has announced that there is no coming back for the jdu from tomorrow onwards you will see the rjd exercising pressure on nitish kumar to vacate the chief ministerial seat and focus on his national ambitions where does that leave the jdu then because then in bihar it becomes rjd versus bjp and the jdu will implode that is what some experts believe your thoughts it is pigment of imag- imagination hmm. for now that if you hypothetical it is very hypothetical something happen tomorrow who will lead what will happen even tejasvi yadav has himself said that okay it, there, there is no hurry regarding to such kind of post point 1 mm. nitish kumar ji is going to serve this nation more than 20 year more mm. don't think about that what will happen 
don't speculate such kind of at least such we we never speculate what happen if narendra modi tomorrow is not the leader of bjp or sonia gandhi or all any political outfit no what is your plan every political party has to have a succession plan united, hold on don't is not a pocket no, party of no 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 what you are worried about we have one minute one minute satyapati why you are worried about that why you are worried about that why you are worried about that satyapati one minute one minute one minute satyaprakash please hear me is the leader of satyaprakash with due respect to nitish kumar ji and we hope that that he is there in political no, life and he is there for no no no, 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 no we are not here please, to make such kind of hypothetical no no question. please answer my question satyapati i have, have, no to I have the right to answer this i have the right to ask this question because if the rjd is going you? to lead the lead no, no, the campaign ask, next time I, I, around I, 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 so is the jdu going to play second fiddle sir i am on my very much capacity so where i am asking you sir what is the future of the jdu what is the road map for the jdu what has he what has he envisioned and sir my question is if if mr nitish kumar does not have a road map for the jdu planned how can i trust him for have a road map for bharat you don't trust him people will trust him people have been trusting him since last you know sir he cannot win only life. only Understand with this. seats in bihar no, no, no. he has to win seats pan india he life, needs to have purchase pan india sir for him to become a national Why leader so, so i'm asking you sir what is the plan if you continue speaking if you don't let me speak no no if Anand, you try if you don't let me speak you have never you are you, you have not, never let you, me finish my point you are not even answering either my please question please give me 2 minute either okay, listen take carefully take your either time. listen take your patiently time. take your time give me 2 minute 60 you don't okay. have a point first of all nitish kumar ji is nitish kumar ji will bring all the opposition party he is in the role of jay prakash narayan to bring all political party together to save the nation na, nation's democratic value democratic setup that mm. is his responsibility for now and he will be leader for jdu and for the nation and for the bihar mm. till he wishes to do so right. nitish so, kumar so ji in the ceremony has indicated something mm. no no hold on nitish kumar ji has indicated something that has different connotation and different meaning i don't want to add anything what okay. nitish kumar ji has already explained and already indicated so, so let me ask But you this nitish me... kumar ji is our leader okay. and let, he is let, leading let, the mahagathbandhan he will lead let, the even 2024 election for mahagathbandhan let doctor let doctor nikhil anand respond is he actually leading the mahagathbandhan or is it the rjd that is leading the mahagathbandhan today is lalu yadav or lalu yadav and tejasvi yadav stronger leaders in this mahagathbandhan with more say and more purchase on ground compared to nitish kumar so then how can nitish kumar project himself as the national face is he not nothing but you know at the, at the hands of the uh, of of the congress party and the rjd how is he going to become the face of the opposition or even if he does he is going to be propped up why does that leave the jdu and how does that bring a trust of those who want to look at an option beyond bjp uh, nikhil anand see the biggest problem with nitish kumar ji is that he has now he has to deal with the rjd he has thrown himself in front of rjd and rjd is going to Nikhil, chew you deal with your problem here yeah. according to the secret deal according to the secret deal he Aray, has Nikhil, to vacate the seat deal for, with your own problem yeah, yeah, you, are, you are you are you are unable to digest the popularity of the nitish kumar and But credibility of the nitish kumar who is, is pushing hard Nikhil, you to please the, who is the bjp face what about your own one, problem one minute one minute satyaprakash ji one minute no 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 nitish kumar ji nitish kumar ji is at the mercy of the rjd they they have, they have three leaders there the, the opposition the say, ruling disposition one minute dr nikhil dr nikhil anand the ruling disposition in bihar today has the ruling disposition in bihar today has three strong faces lalu yadav nitish kumar and tejasvi yadav who's there in the bjp see bjp has at least who's the a face dozen of them even, even not People, nikhil who's the face who's the face of the bjp bihar are sir bjp ka chehra kon hai bihar mein sir बीजेपी का चेहरा कौन है बिहार में किसके नाम पर पीएम मोदी पीएम मोदी के नाम पर आप बिहार का विधानसभा चुनाव लड़ेंगे वहां हुज द फेस यू डोंट हैव अ लीडर यू डोंट यू आर नॉट बीन एबल टू सिंगल आउट यू नॉट बीन एबल टू इवन अराइव अपॉन अ लीडर इन बिहार What? Who is the pocket How are you going to mount a challenge? How are you going to have a mount a challenge when you don't have strong leaders on the ground, sir? Where is the leadership? So, RJD or JDU with BJP? Like I said, sir. Like I said, sir. Lok Sabha is a different dynamic, but for the BJP to establish itself in Bihar, you need to have a face. You need to have a face locally, sir. 
who's going to be able to bring them and a narrative which is going to be different from that of Lalu and Nitish Kumar that you don't have right now. Arun Anand, I have to wind up, but final word to you. If you look at Lok Sabha 2024, has Nitish Kumar put himself in a, in a corner from where he is going to be at the mercy of the other opposition leaders? Is he going to be able to give any wind to his ambition as, as a prime ministerial face? No, it's a it's a non-starter kind of a thing. Uh, what we are talking about, it's a mirage which they are chasing. Because, uh, see, uh, the thing is that uh, right. to become a tall leader, to become, you know, a, a leader of the opposition or this thing, you also need backing of the organizational cadre and a clear-cut ideology. Hmm. And without, and then you also have, uh, you know, uh, so all these three things have to come, a couple of right. things have to come together just merely by making statements or just by putting, you know, two plus two kind of a cast combination, you can't become a leader. I think BJP yeah. has a very strong edge that with that Narendra Modi, with his charismatic personality, is also yeah. backed by a clear-cut ideological roadmap, which these political, the rest of the opposition doesn't have. Right. I thank you all my panelists. Thank you very, very much for joining us on the Saturday debate. Quickly going across to a big CNN News 18 exclusive. Our investigations editor Manish Gupta getting us these data details. The Tibetan and Losar celebrations under the... Chinese community uh, uh, Communist Party's watch. That's what's happening. CCP is keeping close tabs on the Tibetan celebrations in Tibet. The Tibetans are upset with the Chinese government for increased surveillance during the Losar festival. And according to local sources, increased surveillance is one reason locals are very upset. Agencies are coming and searching houses and doing facial profiling being done. Chinese government with great difficulties has permission, given permission to celebrate the Losar festival between the 20th and the 26th of this month. But locals have been told in Lhasa that this is a danger to national security. Tibetans celebrating the festival is a danger to national security, CCP has said. Police is guarding the area with close proximity and they are fearing protests by locals against government. And according to Tibetans, this time His Holiness, the Dalai Lama's palace visit uh, permission has also not been opened. But they've been asked to show identity cards. Tibetans feel that this is an attack on their freedom and the Chinese government wants to contain them. And ultimately, they'll be converted to camps like the Uyghurs. Concern being raised. Another big development with respect to China, US export controls on Chinese semiconductors have entirely ruined the chip industry, sparking mass bankruptcy fears in which thousands of companies shut down their businesses. As many as 5,746 Chinese chip companies have been deregistered in 2022, a 68% increase from 3,420 in the previous year, according to Chinese media. Titanium Media App reporting on 16th of Feb. This is about a 15 chip companies every day on an average. China's leading flash memory manufacturer Yangtze Memory has reduced its production volume and planned to lay off 10% of its employees two months after being included on Washington's entity list of export control in December. U.S. export controls on Chinese semiconductors also significantly affected Chinese firms' performance and confidence. Experts say the reason for the large-scale bankruptcy of Chinese chip companies is the U.S.-China technology war. The U.S. alleging that China has engaged in technology theft for many years. Last year in August, President Joe Biden officially signed the Chips and Science Act 2022. In October 2022, the U.S. Department of Commerce announced a series of chip export control measures which is hurting Chinese manufacturers. With that, we call it a wrap. Thank you for watching. We're crossing over to CNN News 18's Yash Goyal, who's been tracking this. Yash, it's 9 a.m. today. This happened last night. What is the action that's been taken till now? Well, Aisha, as of now, uh, after the entire ruckus broke out in the MCD house at the Civic Centre, uh, both the Aam Aadmi Party and the Bharti Janta Party actually went to the uh, police station, which is the Kamla Market police station. And in fact, uh, the BJP councillor who was allegedly attacked by the Aam Aadmi Party councillor has lodged a complaint with the police. And in fact, she has stated that uh, uh, the entire ruckus broke out and how she was beaten by these very Aam Aadmi Party MLAs. On the other hand, the Shelly Obra, who's the mayor uh, of the MCD, she has categorically said that he has, she has sought time from the commissioner of the police today to meet in this entire case and in fact uh, this entire ruckus we sh saw the visuals how uh, this entire brawl broke out in the house and in fact since morning it was anticipated that uh, some sort of 
situation will arise in the house because early in the morning at around 9 a.m., uh, an AAP councillor, in fact, joined the Bharatiya Janata Party, and in fact, after that, the proceedings began around 11 a.m., where the voting process was actually peaceful. And once the counting began, there was actually a ruckus and sloganeering inside the house where the Bharatiya Janata Party uh, and the Aam Aadmi Party councillors were at the loggerheads. And once the uh, uh, once the results were uh, was about to uh, uh, announced this entire brawl uh, uh, broke out inside the very house and in fact the bjp has also tweeted out a video and in fact they've re uh, uh, released a poster as well alleging that atishi uh, who is the mla from the aam aadmi party was behind this entire chaos in the house because in that particular video she was actually seen talking to certain councillors and the bjp says uh, when uh, atishi was talking to those councillor a moment after that uh, the brawl broke out and a woman councillor actually slapped a male councillor of the Bharatiya Janata Party. So the BJP is stating that they will be taking a legal route in this entire matter because what they are saying as per the secretary and the technical committee of the MCD, uh, the elections were concluded and out of the six standing committee members, three were elected from the Aam Aadmi Party and three from the Bharatiya Janata Party. But uh, Shelly Obroy in fact went ahead after that uh, and said that one vote was invalid and after mm -hmm. that, that particular statement by Shelly Shelly Obroy become a flashpoint between the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Aam Aadmi Party. Uh, apart from this, the bigger question remains for what uh, this ruckus, uh, uh, who is liable? Uh, chairs were broken, mics were broken, podium was broken. So it was actually a dent to the exchequer also because it's the public money which is being used uh, to run uh, the MCD house. And if our elected councillors behave in such a manner, uh, whose responsibility will be there to run uh, uh, a place like national capital. A shocking turn of events took place yesterday at the MCD Civic House. A massive brawl broke out between the BJP and AAP councillors after newly elected MCD Mayor Shelley Oberoi declared one vote invalid in the MCD Standing Committee elections and ordered a re-election. Soon after the mayor's order, the BJP councillors interrupted the counting, which eventually led to the full-blown brawl. The House later fell into chaos with councillors from both sides punching, kicking and slapping each other. Now, following this, BJP councillor Minakshi Sharma filed a police complaint at the Kamla Market Police Station against up councillors. The complaint cited grievous harm and criminal assault on BJP women councillors. Salvatore Babones has become quite a popular voice in India, especially amongst speaking tours, the academics, the intelligentsia. He's an associate professor at the University of Sydney, and he's out with a new article titled Unholy Alliance Inside the Activist Campaign to Pry India from the West. Salvatore Babones is joining us live and exclusively first here on CNN News 18. Salvatore, thanks a lot for coming in. And first, I want to begin by asking you, you've become quite a celebrity in India. How does that feel? You've been invited to you know, several events, uh, speaking engagements. You've traveled a few cities now in India. How has your time been? Uh, look, it's been a pleasure, and the best part has been meeting people. Uh, hmm. you know, being on TV is a lot of fun, but the best part of it is that because you've been on television, then ordinary people recognize you, want to say hello, want hmm. to talk. And for me as a sociologist, it's hmm. been invaluable to have just that opportunity to meet people because they, they think they're you know, familiar with me, they know me somehow, hmm. and it really has been wonderful. You know, there are a lot of people who, you know, obviously like you, like what you say about India, the perspective that you bring on how India is being seen globally. But I think there are equal number of people who don't possibly like you that much because you're almost busting a narrative. Well, if, if anyone doesn't like me, I haven't noticed because I've been, I've been received with, with really such open arms. But yes, I, I know, look, there must be people who mm. uh, resent being challenged uh, with a narrative that they've monopolized for a long time. And mm. I think Western, Western knowledge of India has been mm. monopolized by really just a half dozen people. Uh, columnists and uh, intellectuals with access to Western media mm. who've shaped the entire Western understanding of the country. And that understanding is faulty, you would say? I, I think it's not only faulty, it's largely false. Uh, that is, the, the quantitative data we have mm. suggest a very different India 
from the qualitative understandings mm. that we've received from this small group of journalists and intellectuals. Mm. Before I get to your paper, Unholy Alliance inside the activist campaign to pry India from the West, I just want to take that point further. Do you believe that false analysis, the qualitative analysis in the hands of a few half a dozen people and columnists overseas, is that a recent trend or that, has that existed? Because a lot of people believe that's predominantly anti-Modi activism. I, I think it is mostly anti-Modi activism, but it's anti-Modi activism that has been uh, translated mm -hmm. into anti-India or anti-democracy narratives. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, instead of challenging the government, they're challenging the state. Mm. Uh, we see that, for example, in challenging the uh, independence of the Electoral Commission of India. Mm. Now, I've seen very little in India that suggests that the Electoral Commission has been compromised in any way. Yet the international narrative we've heard is the Electoral Commission has gone from being fully independent uh, uh, just eight or ten years ago mm. to now being in the pocket of the government mm. today. Mm. Now, I doubt that narrative is true. But that's what we hear. People are taking their personal subjective opinions mm. and presenting it as objective fact. Mm. Can I just ask you, uh, you're coming to India, you've been in India at a time when uh, George Soros's comments yes. have been in the news. I'm sure you're aware of, of what he has said, not for the first time. But do you believe his comments as they're being received truly do blow the whistle on exactly what we've been talking about? That there is this group of individuals, including Indians, who are shaping well, almost this exclusively almost Indians. exclusively yeah, Indians, yeah. you believe, who are shaping this narrative because many believe that George Soros doesn't even know much about India. What he's saying and what he believes about India and very little democracy in India is actually a narrative fed to him. Look, I doubt George Soros knows much about Indian democracy, but he does know what he reads in the Washington Post, the New York mm. Times, and the Wall Street Journal, mm. which is then presented as factual accounts of Indian democracy. Yet those accounts are coming, again, I keep stressing this, from a very small number of primarily South Asian, primarily Indian mm. voices who mm. have very strongly held opinions on India. Now, I, I don't doubt the sincerity of those opinions that are being reported in, in these newspapers, but they come to be presented as Facts. fact to the rest of the world. And because we have no other source of information on India, yeah. we take it seriously. I mean, when you hear someone call American democracy now being a fascist dictatorship, you know, the Republicans are fascists, the Democrats are fascists, yeah. you shrug your shoulders because you're very familiar with American democracy. You can make your own decisions. Yeah. When a Westerner sees India called fascist in the Wall Street Journal or the Washington Post or the New York Times, mm. we take that seriously because we know very little about India. We have very little depth of knowledge. Most Americans couldn't name a single Indian leader, not even Narendra Modi. Mm. Those who could name Narendra Modi couldn't name a second one. Mm. Now, I challenge your viewers, almost every one of them could not only name Joe Biden, but could name the last three presidents of the United States mm. and could probably name at least two or three governors and cabinet secretaries in the mm. United States. Your knowledge of America is it's so much deep, made more. it's yeah. so deep that you're not swayed by these sorts of ridiculous statements about American democracy. But our knowledge of India is so shallow that if all we hear mm. are these complaints, we take them seriously. George Soros believes that there's a Hindu nationalist government under Narendra Modi in India and he has in the past to you know, expressed his view that, you know, he wants this government out. I want to understand from you, and I think there are shades of this in your new paper, in your new article, that Hindu nationalism has been almost equated with fascism, with Nazism. Hindutva today is equated with Nazism. And there's very little proof to show that they're actually alike. Why do you think that is happening? And where is this coming from? Why are Hindu nationalists uh, treated with such suspicion? Uh, there's nothing in common between Hindutva <laughs> and Nazism. And I think you can see that when you see what else is also compared to Nazism. We routinely see uh, Zionism, th mm. that is, I I Jews' desire to return to Israel mm. as a form of Nazism or fascism. And that, of course, is absolutely ridiculous. The mm. Nazi regime was as anti Semitic, you know, committed an anti Semitic genocide. Uh, we see these terms thrown around because they're very emotional terms and people want to associate. Uh, things they disagree with in these uh, with these emotional uh, emotional connections to absolute evil. Mm. Uh, uh, of course, this is pure rhetoric. But again, I stress to an American who knows nothing about India, this pure rhetoric becomes all that person 
knows about India, and that's why this is causing such problems. Mm. Now, now, let's be honest, the current government of India is strongly, deeply nationalistic, mm. just as every government in the United States is deeply nationalistic, mm. just as every major political party in India is nationalistic, mm. and the current party is closely associated with Hinduism, just as every major political party in India is closely associated with Hinduism. So mm. there's nothing, you, know, you can call it Hindu nationalist, 